Oh, hi, everyone. This is our Trino contributor call for the 23rd of May. And we already have a couple of people online and we're just going to roll right into the topics. Just to keep it simple, um, I'll do the announcements and stuff first. So first of all, we have Jan Vaz here, who is a new sub-project maintainer. Jan has already been super busy on the Grafana plugin and uh, the Go client as a contributor. Now he's officially a maintainer for both of those, as well as the Helm Trot. And he's been ripping into it a lot. Um, love the work you've been doing, Jan. It's been great to have more hands on deck. And um, yeah, you'll find him on LinkedIn and all over the issues and everything. So thank you so much for jumping up uh, and helping us with this, Jan. That's great. If anyone has any questions on the Go Client or works on the Go Client, Jan is your man as well, by the way. So that's super cool. Next one is... Trino Fest and Trino Contributor Call is happening in June. We will meet at in Boston for the in-person contributor congregation the day after the Trino Fest. Please do make sure you let us know that you're attending in person because we have to make sure that the venue is big enough. Should be no problem. But we also just generally want to understand, let you know details about when, where, and all that kind of stuff. So, And then if you are attending Trino Fest remotely, please make sure you register so you have the links and all that kind of stuff. So those are the easy ones. Now the next one we could talk about maybe is the open lineage PR. So we have Mario here who is the main author of this and you're working with a couple of other people from what I understand, right? So Maybe um, I should bring up the PR or do you want to specifically start into discussing where you're at? Yeah, I'm okay. okay. I think I'll, we can ask him to collect the, I think no major issues, right? Issues. Like yeah. uh, the, yeah. if anything comes up in. Um... I think that was a accidental audio from Vinita. <laughs> 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 so. Uh, Marius, do you want to tell us where this is at? Yeah, uh, so welcome everyone. This is my first one, so uh, please be gentle. Um, so basically what, we, what we've been working uh, here on is the integration with the uh, Open Lineage. Uh, um, the original idea from like our site, ING site, is that we are using Trino um, on our platform and um, it's one of the execution engines uh, supported by our platform. Uh, we needed this integration to fill in uh, the gaps that might appear, might come up uh, while users are using different data engines and uh, creating um, creating the data. So uh, most of the workloads are Spark ones, which we already have, have covered with Open Lineage, but uh, it, it uh, turned out that Trino is our like gap because some users actually execute like uh, create table uh, uh, queries and so on uh, using Trino. And that's where uh, we started to work on this. Currently, the state is we went through several iterations with, I think, Praveen on, uh, um, on review. And uh, the idea for um, discussing it here was for me to also understand the process of um, um, what should we do next for this uh, pull request to be either accepted or is there any more work to be done? And, and that's basically why I put it in agenda. Currently, the the the, the state of the pull request is um, it uh, checks out all the uh, CI/CD with tests added. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything more I should add. So Dane David, I'm not sure who is sort of like our event listener sort of specialist I'm, to look at that more in detail. There's comments from so many people on this. Like, why isn't it wrapped up? Like, Praveen spent a while reviewing it. Uh, oh, that was yesterday. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, my guess is it'll go in soon. We, uh, like 
the last comments were like yesterday, hey, can we squash the commits? And like, sure, done today or yesterday. So but like sounds like that's that's normally the last question before something goes in. So I All right. yeah, we'll see. Like Praveen will likely land it. If he doesn't, um let's follow up Manfred in a couple of days. Okay, are there any questions left from your end otherwise, um, Mario? Sure. No, not really. I mean, I I was hoping this could um, be wrapped up soon because uh, the the best way also to get the feedback from community is to release this. Uh, also, yeah. I know uh, um, Alok is here, who is uh, hoping for this to uh, land because they uh, in Apple also have several additions they wanted to uh, contribute. Yeah, I, I I don't see any reason to worry. I mean, literally, like he's asking the last question just like uh, squash i don't know why he didn't actually just run squash and merge but uh anyways i will like, follow up being, with him yeah yeah exciting because there is also a talk <laughs> at twitter fest about that stuff from what i understand so <laughs> um very good timing um so that's that um the next one is the proposal from, I'm not sure if anyone is here for this PR. Yeah, well, also like this is a Martin thing. Yeah. Okay. And Martin's out, so. Okay, cool. Then I Let's guess- Let's follow up at the next meeting. Yeah, all right, so. Yeah, well, we also like we should we should ping Martin when he gets back. Yeah, I will ping him as well. All right, then what else is there that anyone wants to chat about? I think there's nothing else on the agenda. Unless I missed something. But or... Well, we were hoping Saj would show up for the Trino to Trino connector, but I yeah. Guess he didn't uh, let he does not show up, but I can sort of like fill in everyone. So um, functionality to get it reviewed and in, and then follow up with two or three more PRs around push performance improvements. And, and for those of you that want to look before his event, the, the, He has approval to send in his branch here. <laughs> so um, here's the the commit for it. We should probably also discuss what we can, what we call this connector, because let's call it a Trino or not, not a Trino to Trino connector, because we don't uh, the connector. It kind of makes potentially sense to just call it the Trino connector, but it's also kind of weird because, well, it connects to itself sort of thing. So maybe that's worth discussing as part of the PR, but otherwise, the, uh, we're hope, hoping to get a PR up on that. So we're already waiting for, for that to to be able to collaborate right with um and so that's that's why that's coming hopefully soon Is there anything else that anyone 
anyone wants to talk about uh, on that aspect. I'm just curious what the status of that. So I think it's gone into defunct land for quite a while. Uh, like, yeah, I can. Uh, I think it's one of them that Ravine. Oh, th this is the, the a PR. Yeah. It like adds a group ring. We should like, yeah. That's their attributes other than groups. Yep. Everyone else uh, auth system is due. Um, well, also maybe expect attributes off of. Uh, again, these are like interesting technologies that we should. Uh, um, Dave, question like, how does this, this work when you have um, uh, when you have views? Because views change. Right? identities and the answer is I have no idea like but I think this is a really power, powerful feature I don't think we should implement this feature by like creating synthetic groups in the LDAP protocol. That's a great approach. So for this groups provider plugin to move forward, then is there technically a way to untangle the two? Like it seems like to me that there's kind of like two things. You're like on the one hand adding this groups provider plugin, but on the other hand, you're doing that over letter. Well, so keep in mind, better. we also use the show user and store groups method. function call to be able to see, hey, what are the groups that the user is a member of? 
So we need a whole bunch of more plumbing just for troubleshooting if we're not going to put uh, wire those LDAP groups into the standard uh, groups. I, correct. Ways to look those up. I, I don't know. If you remember, yeah. uh, then when we were first doing OPA, I was passing in the X and find out so that we can sort of like make a bit more discussion around this and move this forward then? Uh, I don't have a bandwidth for that at the moment. I can work on the PR to get it to a state of like removing that weird mapping that we agreed we don't like, or I can do the research in the um, how to do user attributes. I can't, I don't really have time for both. But okay. you think it would be more I've... valuable. Then I think would it be more valuable than to remove that stuff to get it in the interest yeah. of getting the plugin yeah. in and then move forward with the enhancements after? Absolutely, we should get the we should get LDAP groups in. Like it's an important feature. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, sounds good. So are you good with that, Christian? Yeah, that's good. Makes sense. Awesome. So then, um, potentially Pablo and Christian, you you can collaborate on the next steps after the PR and and like help with reviews here. Yeah, that sounds good. Awesome. Well, take that is good discussion. Love it. Well, that's that's how our whole uh, Actus control system works is based off of this plugin. So <laughs> it's very well production tested. Trust me. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. That's good to know. Um, so we'll put this in. Next, who wants to talk something specifically? Hi, um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. This is Praveen. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Hey, I have one um, topic I wanted to touch upon this forum here. This is my first time in this forum. That's so um, cool. I just wanted to understand where the community is headed in this direction or if there's an, any effort in this area. What we are trying to accomplish is to build, uh, to power our real-time dashboards, which require like millisecond response times. We're talking about less than uh, 80 millisecond response times, right? And uh, all of these are backed by, you know, um, some of the fast query engines like single store or um, other caching mechanisms. Um, and I wanted to know if the community has uh, tested or uh, done any work in this area, you know, to have such a low latency query um, performance. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what I tell my colleagues in Bloomberg. Bloomberg, it's Trino is not a real time data delivery system. If you want that, go use something else. Uh, but you know, that's that's my. Uh, insight and personal opinion. Right. I I think that's how we start off. But one of the uh, you know most powerful feature Trino brings in is actually the query federation. Yeah. We're, we're able to like switch and decide uh, an engine. <laughs> but the thing I was curious is if the backend would be something like single store, which are really fast query engines, literally like caching uh, on the backend. Um, I, I was wondering if Trino can handle the concurrency. I understand it is primarily originally meant for OLAP kind of queries, right? Um, but it, uh, but uh, would that be an effort? Another uh, analogy is with uh, how Dremio has been doing things, right? They, they have a great federation capability as well, and but they also have reflections that uh, that users can enable to speed up their queries right um, so something of this that. is a uh, this is a large complex subject so uh, about seven years ago I worked on uh, a, a a plugin for Trino at Facebook and we were running we were able to run queries in the range of about 70 milliseconds but it was you know, completely custom stuff. So 
to hit those sorts of data rates, you need to have, uh, one, you need to have fairly simple queries. Um, like you aren't going to be able to do very complex queries because you just don't have enough computation time. Um, you need to have all the data local it needs to be in memory or on local flash, like maybe with very modern distributed flash systems, you could pull it off, but it's challenging. Uh, and um, you can, uh, you can probably get it down. My guess is that you'll need a team of a few people and I don't know, like, six months plus to like go through and like find all the latency stuff that's been introduced in the past, like five or six years that make everything slightly slower. Like it's very easy for a dev to go in and like modify something in, I don't know, the protocol or like the way things are stitched together to add five or 10 milliseconds at a time here. The way we got down to 70 milliseconds was profiling the system finding the latent operations and replacing them with something that wasn't latent. Uh, and it was a lot of work. Uh, and in the end, we never rolled it out because no one needs a system that fast, even at Facebook. Uh, we had a separate system that was a federated like system that the back end was sharded MySQL, highly customized. Uh, well, not custom software, but very specific data layouts with indexes for every query that would have run. Uh, and that thing ran thousands of thousands and thousands of queries per second. Uh, and the latencies were, I don't know, a couple hundred milliseconds, maybe 500 milliseconds. Uh, there were, I think, 10,000 plus MySQLs to like, I don't know, uh, 50 or 100 Trinos to pull it off. Uh, because basically you have to have all the data pre-organized for your exact queries. So it is possible. It is, it takes a fairly sophisticated team and a lot of time to pull it off. Um, One thing that we, that I see a lot of people are talking about is the combination of Trino and one of those systems, like, so that like you can kind of like, federate the data from like wherever the hell the data is from into these systems in from Trino and then use those faster systems for just that limited dashboard usage. But again, you have to build up a massive pipeline and that system has to be fast enough, blah, blah, blah. Right. So it's still, it's a big effort in all cases. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are people who are working on things like, you know, better materialized views uh, and like, all sorts of things like that. Like you can use a JDBC connector and you can run a fairly fast connection. Uh, but I don't think anyone's going, I want 70 milliseconds. Like there's a, there, there's a, there's a line that's somewhere around like one to 200 milliseconds that you actually need to switch architectures to like you, 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 you want to have a different design. Um, so like Trino's designed for like, longer running queries. So, you know, our assumption is that queries are going to take a long time and therefore like just starting at the top, like the connection protocol is uh, designed so that it doesn't act, it doesn't like create a single socket and then run a query because, and then like get the results on the same socket. Cause our assumption is that that query might take 12 hours and the socket's going to die in the middle. So like, we're doing multiple RPCs to do a single query. Like, yeah, if you're in the same data center, those RPCs can be like sub millisecond, but like you get the idea that like, we're not designing for super low latency. Like it can be done. I'm just saying like, it's really not what this community's focused on. Okay, well, thank you for that response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like you said, a few areas, um, if I might follow up for another minute. Mm -hmm. um, so one is um, the, the overhead. Uh, we're trying to push down the queries to the engine behind, right? Uh, all of them. And uh, in this case, Trino is just serializing, deserializing all the data. Is there any work in, to improve this, uh, you know, efficiency of serialization, deserialization? 
I mean, normally if you want a system to be fast like this, you write a connector that has the raw data directly and you read it directly inside of Trino. So you have your data sitting in some custom format sitting on disk or in memory. If you want to go remote, then like now you have to pay the price of your remote protocol. You can design high performance remote protocols. So like you would build a custom connector here and then you can do whatever you want behind the scenes. Can't you just load the data into the memory connector? That's pretty damn fast. We do it quite a bit. Uh, yes, but the memory connector is like, doesn't do well in terms of like auto scaling. But again, in a system like this, you probably want to auto scale it. But if you lose a machine, you lose data. It's not like resilient, but you could take the memory connector and make it more resilient. Yeah, I'd start with the memory connector. It, it does work well for many yeah. things that we use it for. Yeah, it's crazy fast. We use it for testing because it's super fast. Yep. Makes the test really fast. So that that brings up a good point. Um, that's something we are looking at, um, and oh, we would love contributions. The memory connector in an ideal world would be connected and supports everything, um, so that we can use it for all the testing of everything. But we just haven't had a chance to, like you know, implement views and whatever, like materialized views and all sorts of other things. So if anyone has modifications for the memory connector that implement some more of those things or has performance improvements, we would love to see pull requests on those. Because it would make everyone slide. Trino, if you want to learn Easy. Trino, it's a great place to start. Is like, there's a, the, basically you can just go through the memory connector, look at every feature that's not implemented and just start adding them. Like it's, it's a great way to learn how stuff fits together. Or make an Apache Arrow connector, and it's all just IPC to so local memory at the right. Trino. That's kind of the cheating way that uh, Snowflake does it. It downloads an Arrow format, and it's all just IPC to that uh, local memory. Right. I was also thinking same thing. Like, has anyone done this uh, Arrow connector? Or... Uh, that's why this is an open source community. There's no free lunch. Okay. Somebody starts it and works on it. Also, the other the other aspect I wanted to mention is um, we are constantly working on all sorts of performance things. So, like, are we going to reach real time dashboarding thingy? Well, that's not a goal, but we are constantly getting fa faster with all sorts of air effort. So, that's that's the other upside. So maybe your real time dashboards have to be just semi real time, and then you might meet it. But that's completely up to your individual specific use case, right? So your mileage may vary. It's very much the the model. Thank thank you. Uh, um, is there any any um? So we also think of like embedded query engine, right? Like I know there's a local query runner, um, you know. I, I think it's primarily used for testing purposes. Um, is that an option that we can actually explore to see, you know, we can avoid this overhead of a network? I don't know I what you're talking Embedding the square runner into the uh, client itself. I'm not aware of uh, that query runner thing. Sorry. Okay. Are you talking about the the testing thing? Yeah. Query runners. We They're use used a, in yeah, tests. Local query runner. That's yeah, used for testing mainly. But do you're thinking? I mean, that's... yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah. I mean, the local query runner is a. Uh, a testing thing and is slowly being removed from the system. Uh, it um, so query runner is a term that we used in in the testing because for everyone else that uh, is a um, it's like a it's a little helper thing that basically starts up Trino servers inside of your JVM. 
So typically we start like four Trino servers, get them to talk to each other over sockets. And then we run queries at them so we can test like distributed computing without having to spin up a bunch of Docker containers. Um, there is uh, There are two uh, really simple query runners. One is called local query runner and one is called standalone query runner. Uh, the standalone query runner only starts up one server and it communicates directly to it through memory. There's a thing called local query runner that I wrote like 10 years ago or whatever that we use throughout that manually stitches together the internals of a server uh, and doesn't support everything uh, and doesn't use um, when you run queries it doesn't even use multiple threads it just like builds drivers and like manually drives them uh this thing is the worst when you're actually trying to work on the, it, the server because like it doesn't use the standard stuff to like connect all the components together so every time you change something you spend like hours in local query runner like restitching stuff together so my goal is to actually remove that from the code base entirely now, of course, you could use the standalone query runner. That's just a normal Trino server in memory. It uses a memory to memory protocol. Like it doesn't use a pro, it literally just creates the objects and calls the thing. Um, but it is a full query, uh, full Trino server at that point. So I would avoid local query runner and stick with standalone query runner. Uh, but they're both testing objects and could like, everything that's in the test package could go at any time. Um, yeah, also, what does that have to do with, like, potentially improving the performance of the overall system in a real deployment? Uh, it removes the network protocol between a client and a server. So basically, you run the whole server in your client. Uh, remember, Trino's not a Trino's not a library. It says that right in, like, the very first descriptions of, like, what we are, what we're not. So, like, if you want to use it as a library, like, it may change. Your stuff may break at any moment. Like the public interface to Trino is you exec your server and you point a client at the rest endpoints. Everything else can be changed at really any time. Got it here. Thank you, Dane. Yeah. Very good sort of information. Yeah. Cool. All right. Anyone else want to discuss anything? Hey, man. This is Josh. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is my first time, so uh, I'm happy to meet everyone. Um, and I will open my video, so just so have a face to face. Um, okay. so I have a question in terms of a uh, push down. So I'm from Province Team as well, and what we found is we can push down some query to let the single store to do heavy lifting. So one of the challenges I think I want to know is if it's possible to do sub query push down uh, and push down to through so JDBC connector to uh, uh, this SQL engine. All right, so push down is really a Martin topic, but I can oh, I give you what our philosophy is. So the way push down works awesome. in Trino is that uh, when we plan a query, we end up with a tree of operators. We basically start at the bottom where a table scan is and we say, hey, table scan, the next node on top, can you handle this? And we keep doing that until the thing says, no, I can't handle that. And then those collapse into a single thing gets sent down. So can it do subquery cache uh, push down? Absolutely. It can do it today. But like that may or may not work out for you depending on what you're pushing into so uh the capabilities of the thing you're pushing in like you know we're going and we're saying okay uh at the like the very simplest thing is like hey can you accept this filter so then the connector looks at it and says do i have a mapping for every single function in that filter that can produce the same semantics as trino uh, if it can't, then it's like, hey, I can't do that. Sorry. So whatever you're connecting to, the systems that you're working with, the important part is understanding the queries you want to run. And then you want to make sure every single function that you're going to interact with, there is a mapping. Uh, and then you need to repeat that 
kind of up. And I, that I, I don't know if there's pushed. Uh, my guess is there's not pushed down for literally everything. Like there's only pushed down for um, like, there's probably some missing items, but at some point you might be like, Oh, we need a push down for some new concept in the query plan. In which case, like, you would talk to Martine about adding more pushdown capabilities. Um, the pushdowns are defined in, um, here, I'll share a link. Uh, I just want to sort of like also mention, like in terms of the pushdown, that's also one of the reasons, like one of the things you can do to find out. Uh, and I just changed, choose the wrong one. Um, there, here we go. So in terms of pushdown, we try to document for each connector what kind of like aggregate and other functions pushdowns are happening. Uh, and the coverage on what connectors support what pushdown is very varied. So it will like vary a lot on depending the data system you're connecting to. And when we implement pushdown, um, it's correctness over, over performance. So when you implement that, you need to verify that the semantics of the underlying function that you're mapping to in the underlying system is the same. And that most of the time is fine, but sometimes there's like issues with data types and chairs like that. So they only work for certain data types and on all that stuff. So you need to very closely look at that. And when the data system you're working with does like um, that connector doesn't have pushdown. There's a high chance that some other connector has a pushdown in that realm. Then you just look how that one's done. And then only when none of the connectors has that kind of pushdown that you're looking for that function, then you can talk to Martin and like, we'll have to look at extending the SPI and that kind of stuff to like support more. Yeah, I, I linked to the, where you can find it in the code. They're all like apply such and so there'll be like an apply filter method and apply projection. Uh, that's like the first one I found in that file. That's uh, apparently we can push down update statements. I didn't know that. So yeah, it's powerful. Uh, but by the way, this is the core problem with federation. Uh, unless you have tight control over the queries that are going to be run, you're going to always run into issues where like there isn't a mapping because like at the end of the day, this is a transpiler. So like you're going to have input, you need to recompile it for some output. There's not a mapping for it. It's like, well, I couldn't do that. Now in Trino, when it says it couldn't do it, it's just like, fine, I'll just run it myself. Um, so it won't fail, but your performance may go from like, you know, whatever milliseconds to like, well, now like all the entire database is being dumped out and you're running it in memory and it could take a long time. So like, which will feel like falling off a cliff to end users. What about the table function? Why not just use that if you want full push down to the other data store? Oh yeah. I mean, if if you just if you actually have the thing written in your other language, you can definitely use a table function where you're like, here's literally the Postgres SQL I want you to run. Yeah. So this is a this is the query pushdown table function where the the one drawback of that is you have to do this kind of syntax where the actual query in the SQL is oh. like embedded in it, right? So whoever authors your queries needs to understand that part. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think this, this is, is actually also thinking. Mm. Like, do you so this is actually function? the next thing I was going to ask. Uh, how I, I found this very powerful, but it somehow still have a limitation. I was wondering how this is push down system. So this is called uh, path through a query. Uh, feature looks like because we we're thinking about parental parameter like this like i can adding more feature on this how it's how is the community effort on this well currently in the community connectors we have this query this table function that does the pass through that exists in a bunch of queries and is either in a bunch of connectors either called query or i think like raw query from what i remember and then i think in the sql connector or whatever one of them we also have one to, to run procedures in a similar fashion, but 
they are all very similar. The, they require a result set, like the, the query one requires, requires a result set to be returned. I, but you, we, you can write more and make them more powerful. I believe your question is more like, how do I parameterize the query that is being executed here? Yes. And in general, the answer is you probably cannot. So the way this works is we parse this query and then during analysis, we see, okay, you're calling a table function named query there. That's the, the first line directly below table. Okay. So at that point, remember SQL is a, a, uh, sweet is a, is a, uh, completely typed language. So it's it, to be able to, during analysis, we need to be able to look at that function and figure out the exact return type that that query is going to return to our system, okay? And then we're, uh, so to do that, we have to, at analysis time, before the query is even running, we will take that string, we go to Postgres and we say, hey, prepare this query, and it tells us what the return types are gonna be, and now that's the return type of that column. So you're like, I wanna parameterize it, you could templatize it when you're submitting the query, but you can't have like rows go in and then modify the SQL because like that just isn't how it works because this is uh, statically typed here. Um, so you could write your own function, your own query function, uh, where like you can just write one of these. This isn't that hard. Uh, but again, at analysis time before it runs, you only have access to this query arrow here. That's a constant. So you can have whatever constants are available. And given those, you need to tell us what, what's the, the output type of that function. I gave you another example why you're not gonna parameterize it. If you're gonna use the raw query was a table function for elastic, you're pushing JSON structures. You're not going to be doing parameterizations of nearly a raw format that's being shoved through a table function. It's yeah. for the underlying system, not for Trino to interpret and redo uh, stuff. So it's powerful. It's just very weird. Yeah, like see, this is this is what Eric is implying to like the in, the in JSON it's called raw query and the query is just a JSON filter basically, right? So yeah, it's yeah, whatever it's whatever the underlying system's query language is just randomly written within here and just passed in. Yeah. So table functions are very powerful. Like you should go read the docs on them. They're defined in the SQL spec. Maybe there's some combination that works for what you want to do. And we do have a developer guide for writing your own as well, which should get you started you so much. with the source code. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks so much. This is very helpful. Thank you. Welcome. And if you do write any cool ones that have more applicability for others, we would love a pull request. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Well, where are we at? Anyone else? We have lots of people here. I don't think I even like managed to get the whole list going, but I think that's probably okay. There are a few. Oh, yeah. now you're like so it's probably Question. No, just uh, and sorry about that. Uh, I just want to know this is recording. Uh, will you guys publish? Because uh, I want to follow yeah. up on one of the link, a few links yes. there. Yes, I will. Okay. So, like all our Trino community broadcasts, oh, sorry, all our Trino contributor calls are going on to our YouTube channel and on the like the video recording will be linked here. Oh, okay. Once I write it all up later today, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, Manfred, you might want to attach the, like some of the links that were posted in chat also. Okay, let me. I think you get a dump of the uh, the chat off the recording, but I, I don't remember. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh, I'll, I'll get all that. All right, there was someone else that we heard in the background that ended up being interrupted again. So now is your time. <laughs> I think we are asking for okay. people. PR reviews, I think those we have already posted in the WebEx chat. If you can just pull up those PRs. Uh... And 
mentioned I updated the hang on uh, where is the in, in is is that are those links in the chat? Yeah, it's in the Zoom chat. Uh, da, 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 da. There's one from me and there's one from Martin from my team. Uh, this one. I don't see it. Oh. Oh, the ice packs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We should get that in, Dane. That's the where we discussed how the split rate generation is already in the hive and delta and Hudi connectors, and this is just the same approach to be put into the into the iceberg thing. Uh, we decided together in the past that we are gonna get this in, and then we'll work on like proper rate limiting separately as a follow up task across all the connectors, but to basically have the same like to basically have like even playing field for the connectors we're going to get that in i guess you just didn't get around to it i think the last ones was ronak saying so yeah actually a reviewer already yeah yeah you, you oh, are yeah and, Piotr and... did okay sorry it's okay. on my i i have a massive backlog of prs that i'm working through uh so uh um, I'll try to move it up unless one of the other maintainers wants to go look at it. <laughs> okay, and then there was another one. Yeah, just right above that, there's a client redirect peer that is pending. A lock, that's yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dang. Uh, that's the David... one what Yeah. That's the one where we had the initial PR from Sash merged, right? And now this yeah. is the one that makes it configurable and fixes it up. This one had a lot of uh, reviews and input from Star already, so I think it just needs a, a final look from David, probably. No, oh, I, I, and it there, needs there was a... a there was a discussion of what, I don't know if David's actually able to talk right now. Uh, there was a we had a discussion of like whether we want this in the CLI yeah. and the OD and the JDBC. Yeah, I yeah, think I the think idea of only one in JDBC, but I, I don't know. I guess we, we could do both. But yeah. Because this is this is really about like someone's running a hosted environment where like they think a single RPC that is a Trino formatted thing's going to crash their entire environment, which like you definitely shouldn't be running your system like that. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, like we could add it to both, but like I, if you don't trust the Trino server you're connecting to on the CLI, then like don't connect to it. Yeah. yeah, I think that the, the reason we also wanted this is because the uh, Trino gateway usage would benefit from like that configurability. That's why Star. Yeah, but it uses uh, it uses JDBC, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, but like any... the, the gateway yeah. isn't going to like exact a claim. So like the the question was like, does this even make any sense on the CLI? Hmm. Well, Alok, can you uh, rebase this and then David can follow up after this, hopefully soon? Yeah, sure. I'll do that. Thank you. Awesome. All right, cool. There's one new message. I uh, mentioned this in Manish here. Oh, yeah. So if I can quickly uh, talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, first thing is, I think. Uh, I mean, I'll come to this as well, but uh, thanks to uh, Dane, uh, Marias, and uh, um, Anu uh, uh, for getting us that uh, high 3 PR in. Uh, I think that that will help uh, us as well uh, to configure the custom catalog. Um, yeah, and then I'll come on the pending PRs. <laughs> so the one uh, which went in, uh, that was uh, cool. Yeah, this one is, I think, if David gets some time, uh, I know I think he was out and busy for some time. So maybe I can discuss with him. This is the ag so. push down for metrics? Yeah, this we discussed, I think, last to last um, meetup as well. Um, I think David has did a quick look to it. And 
maybe you need to spend a little bit more time. Uh, so David did chime in on this one already? Uh, not yet, I think. So, no, did I think. Did Piotr do a review? Or did he just do a drive-by review? Like, sometimes he just skims code and doesn't do a full review. Yeah, I think he was um, getting busy. And then Amog from Tabular, he has commented. So I gave even met him and uh, updated for his comments as well. Um, I think we All right. need a little bit of time. Yeah, for, from... This just needs, like, some maintainer to own pulling it over the line. I don't know if that's going to be Piotr or David or someone else, but let's okay. put that on the list to figure out. Okay. okay. Yeah. The next one was, uh, I think it's already, uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, I was just looking at this one. Reviewed. It looks like there's a, it needs to be updated yes. again. Scroll the I'll bottom, update. Manfred. Yeah, there is one uh, comment I need to take care. And there was one question uh, for David on his comment. So, um, if he gets time, uh, maybe we can just uh, reply to it. Uh, then I oh, can this one. To merge it. Yeah. Okay, I yeah, will. I think that's the. This should be a smaller one. Yeah. And that one should be quick, David. You already approved it. We just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will I will do a reminder. <laughs> it's on the right direction. Um yeah, the last one is more on the discussion. Uh, yeah. And again, thanks, Manfred, for uh, starting this issue. Um not sure if anything else being discussed, maybe if Dean or David or Martin or a Peter might have discussed, you guys have discussed internally. This was to maintain the storage tables. Basically, right now it is not. Yeah, we need to add alter materialized view execute, and then this should just work. Like, yeah, that's we what already this have the functionality. Yeah, that's yeah. what the proposal here is as a potential approach, like alter table or alter materialized views. But the yeah. question then is like, a is that okay? And b, um, <laughs> who uh, like how do we want to organize the PRs around that work? Like. I think obviously we, Martin would have to chime in first. I think I I talked to him. He, okay, like he he was like, yeah, that seems. I mean, we're literally just repeating our other pattern. So normally, uh, this comes in with a first review that just adds alter materialized view execute um, the grammar. Um, sometimes the grammar comes in independently, but basically, like we'll want the grammar, and then that should pull through to the uh the connector interface um yes, so yeah, just yeah. follow the path of alter table uh execute yeah they're all um, table okay yeah so that should get plumbed through um and then uh that goes up as a separate pr and then you add in the uh it's actually probably just a couple lines of code to get the iceberg you might you might just want to throw that on the end if it's like tiny because um, like there's already the functionality to do it. You just need to call it. Um, the only thing I would uh, look at is whether or not uh, alter table uh, mm -hmm. execute and alter materialized view execute, if they actually end up going down the same path or do we want two parallel paths through the code? I don't know the answer to this. Someone's got to look into it. Um, yeah. But this yeah thanks thanks Dane uh, yeah so this looks uh, good uh, at least like from the comments perspective we were not very sure or till now like if um, everyone agrees on adding a new uh, command or new SQL but yeah so yeah yeah, this, yeah I I actually think Piotr's just confused here because he I don't think he realized that this is materialized view uh, there's just no way to execute the compaction already exists there's just no way to execute it on a materialized view table. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I think he's worried that it's like the storage table is an implementation detail and it leaks up. But like, whatever, no, we like... we hid that. It's it's not visible anymore. Like I think yeah, that was like... removed like a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, Maybe. but he, he, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, but like, oh, so, although so... this comment is two weeks old, so this probably coincides with that. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay. So yeah. So if you want to go ahead with that towards that implementation, Martin will be the one that will be responsible for reviewing the the grammar PR and the SPI okay. changes. Sure. Yeah. Somebody from our side will will take a step. Thanks. Awesome. Cool. Well, I will put that to the notes. All right. I think that was the last one on your list, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, the last one of these I was on, someone asked about um, factorization in uh, Trino. Uh, so it's basically yes. SIMD. And uh, the first stuff landed. There's now vectorized SIMD versions of parquet bit packing that landed. Landed so, where? Like, did you Trino. finish? Like, you did the. I I didn't write it. It was uh, uh, who wrote this? Ronak, I think, is what came. Yeah, Ronak wrote Ronak. it. Yeah, here I can put the PR in. Very low level stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so your work on the. Um, on the air compressor stuff is, is separate, right? Like that's going to be on the. Oh level. yeah, yeah. I'm uh, just cleaning up the the code now. At this point, we figured out what was causing the problems. Hive's got a bug where they uh, when they load Z standard, they load all the symbols into the global symbol table, and then if you try and load a different version of Z standard, it corrupts the malloc library somehow, and then everything crashes. So. <laughs> uh, Definitely need to patch Hive also because they should not be loading libraries into the global symbol table unless they absolutely have to. Um, yeah. yeah, that's another good call out. Um, we are on Java 22 and I'm assuming none of you have any problems with this at this stage because nobody complained and everything is good. So we love it. And well, looking forward to charging more into those things. So that's cool. Can't wait for Java 23. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be awesome good times yeah cool by the way did we uh in the java 22 then did we see any uh or you have seen any improvement with virtual threads or any other feature uh so we're avoiding virtual threads right now because um unless you have very controlled code they can deadlock um okay. because uh um, object synchronization and wait notify uh, pin the thread and um, if you run out of like carrier threads so you have like basically one per CPU then the whole thing can deadlock uh, and so virtual threads can work really well if you're like I don't know like a Lucene server where like all the code and the whole code base is yours and like you can carefully go through and make sure it works but since trino is a federation system like basically every driver we'd have to be comfortable with and it's just not good enough at this point to be able to use for us we might be able to use them in some very controlled parts but it is pretty dangerous so we've decided to like not really dig into them at this point uh, with 23 in the early access, they fixed thread pinning for object serialization, but they still have thread pinning for wait notify. And uh, if you search the Trino code base and all of the libraries, there are a handful of libraries that use wait notify, um, okay. which is pretty shocking. I didn't know anyone actually used it anymore, but uh, <laughs> like, um, no, and no there's a couple of libraries. There's a couple of libraries in um, less than stellar uh, things we connect to that use it everywhere. <laughs> like okay. the cool. the the systems written by like you know big Java communities, they generally don't use wait notify at all. Um, yeah, mostly not anymore. Yeah, but the the Oracle folks have said that they're working on uh, wait notify hopefully for 23 it's in august so if they nail that then we should be able to start rolling out virtual threads and they are awesome like it'll make the code base so much simpler uh, okay. 
Yeah, it's not going to get boring in Tino land for everyone. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I guess we kind of on time as well anyway. So thank you very much. That was a very useful meeting for everyone, hopefully. Um, okay. I will update Damn the notes. Useful. I will update notes, put that on the on the put the video on the YouTube channel and collect all the things that I can. Um I also will do the same for the tuna gateway meetup from yesterday. So stay tuned for that later today. Cool. And I <laughs> hope to see many of you at Trino Fest in June in Boston. In person. All right.